So we'll now summarize uh, some of the mathematical properties that we have seen so far. So we have seen that the Laplacian matrix as well as the normalized symmetric uh, uh, Laplacian matrix are both symmetric and real. That implies that each one has a complete set of orthogonal eigenvectors with real eigenvalues. Um, something that I have not shown explicitly but um, which is relatively easy to show is that both are positive semi-definite. That means if you consider if you consider the equation YL or the expression YLY well Y transpose LY that's a quadratic form and being positive definite means that for any any non-zero vector this expression is positive and positive semi-definite means that for any vector this is non-negative. <coughs> this in turn implies that the eigenvalues are all non-negative. That's sort of a different way of defining this, uh, or is a way to define semi-definite. We have seen that uh, because um, this one is sort of a transformed version, this ordinary eigenvalue problem is a transformed version of this generalized eigenvalue problem, that they have the same eigenvalue and that the eigenvectors are related by this equation here that we have seen further above. <coughs> so if, it, if you find it too difficult to deal with that problem, you can deal with that problem and then simply convert the vectors into the form that you would need for this generalized eigenvalue problem. Now since the eigenvalues are the same for the generalized eigenvalue problem as for the um, ordinary eigenvalue problem for the symmetric normalized Laplacian matrix, it's clear since this one is positive semi-definite, the, um, the eigenvalues here also has only non-negative eigenvalues and also has a full set of eigenvectors because this one has a full set of eigenvectors. However, they are not orthogonal in the normal sense, they are only orthogonal with respect to the inner product that contains the weighted degree matrix here. This simply follows from the relationship of u hat and u. Furthermore, we have seen that the one vector is a solution of the ordinary differential equation, and not differential equation, eigenvalue problem, <coughs> as well as the generalized eigenvalue problem uh, with an eigenvalue of zero. And the reason is that the rows of L, the elements within a row of L add up to zero. Uh, that's why if you multiply L with a 1, 1, 1, 1 vector, you get zero out and then this is equal to the right side if you choose lambda to be zero. Now for the ordinary differential uh, uh, eigenvalue problem, uh, this transformed one, this is not the case anymore. So there it's the uh, d, d bar vector that is an eigenvector, uh, the first eigenvector, but again with eigenvalue zero. Yeah, this simply from, fo follows from the fact that the 1, 1, 1, 1 vector uh, is an eigenvector of this one and because of this relationship here, or rather this relationship. Now, um, if you have a disconnected graph, then um, intuitively, each subgraph that's disconnected from the other ones will uh, converge to a constant value across all its nodes, but a different value for each subgraph. So that means, uh, and that stays on forever, right? And that means that belongs to a solution with eigenvalue zero because it belong stays on forever and does not decay. Um, 
So if you have disconnected, and we have seen this above for spectral clustering, um, so if you have a disconnected graph, then there's not just one, 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 one vector which has the eigenvalue of zero, but there are several others depending on how many subgraphs you have. And one way to write this, so you could assume that you have, let's say, you have one, if you have a graph with four nodes, right, you could have your, your first vector with eigenvalue zero would be this one, and the second one would be 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. So this would indicate that the second, these two nodes are connected and these two nodes are connected, but this group and this group are disconnected. Um, you can always also convert this because both have the eigenvalue of 0. You can have sort of linear combinations of these would also be eigenvalues with 0. So you can have a different set of two eigen uh, vectors, both with eigenvalue 0, and that would be um, 1, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 1. These do not have 0 mean anymore, um, uh, but they are convenient in the way that sort of each cluster, each subgraph is indicated by the ones, and then all the other other subgraphs or the nodes of the other subgraphs have the value of zero, and these are referred to as indicator vectors. If you if you want to sort of maintain this property of um, zero mean for most of the vectors, so for all vectors except for the first one, you would have to choose this set of eigenvectors. Right? So since the eigenvector zero is degenerate, so you have multiple eigenvectors with the same eigenvalue, you have the choice of picking sort of different sets of orthogonal eigenvectors. This is sort of maybe the the obvious first one, but this in some sense is a more convenient one. Now if you do, don't do this, as I sort of implicitly mentioned just right now, uh, but you choose the first one to be 1, 1, 1, 1, then because of this decorrelation constraint here, wait a second, okay, it's not this one, but if you would replace 1 by beta, it would be the decorrelation constraint um, or orthogonality constraint, then you would know that all the others are orthogonal to this one, and this means they have zero mean, right? So then if you add over all components, which this is actually doing, then this vector has to have uh, the value of zero, the sum of all this of its component. <coughs> There's a similar statement for the generalized eigenvalue problem, but here it's the it's the weighted um, weighted zero mean. Yeah, and we have seen so if when we consider the optimization problem and the associated eigenvalue problem, that the solutions of the eigenvalue problems or the eigenvectors of the eigenvalue problem actually solve the optimization problem, and that is stated here. And the eigenvalues are actually the, the value of the objective function. So that's very convenient. So this is a, 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 a um, sort of a relationship that you might know from principal component analysis, where you also want to minimize uh, the reconstruction error, um, and that corresponds to the uh, eigenvalues, eigenvectors with the largest eigenvalues in that case. Right? But this correspondence between uh, sort of a quadratic optimization problem and the eigenvalue uh, equation um, you can also see in principal component analysis.